to service at St. Matthew's. It's good to be together in worship and prayer. Our service starts this morning on page 94 with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a lay, path, lay person of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Rise, Shine, You People. Number 665. Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Our service continues on page 147 with the greeting and the greeting. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as in the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from 1 Kings, chapter 19, <clears throat> starting at verse 4. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary bloom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bloom, broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in and in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. Please read Psalm 34 <clears throat> responsively. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall e ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. 
The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good, they who take refuge in God. Our second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 25. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come from your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here ends our second reading. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Chapter 6, verses 35 and 41 through 51. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. I come from a long line of list makers. We like lists. In my dad's shirt pocket was a little black book, and in that book was a list of all the sows, how many pigs were in that litter, when they were vaccinated, and what the market price was when they were sold. My mother was the same. Probably three weeks before a holiday, there would be a list on the refrigerator things that needed to be cleaned, the menu, a grocery list. And I can go on and on about lists in my house. And I think I'm neither better nor worse than they were. I like my lists too. It makes me feel organized. It makes me feel like I have a little bit of control over things. I like to look at my list and check things off when they're done. Continuing in that habit, I like to look, I like to write my sermons early, and I like to look at that list. 
for a while before I need to deliver that list, that sermon. Today's original sermon was probably written a month ago, but this isn't that sermon. This is a different sermon that was written without that stewing part in between writing it and delivering it. I attended the funeral of a young man a few weeks ago. It was a terrible tragedy, but it was a beautiful service. During the time of remembrance, the priest told us the deceased had believed that he was fond of saying, God has a plan for me and for all of us. Since I had been dwelling for weeks in the words of today's gospel, my first thought when I heard that was, wow, that must really be comforting for the family at this very sad time to know their loved one believed. Life can be so uncertain at times. How do we prepare for times like this? I don't think lists help. However, Jesus does give us very specific instructions in today's gospel about what we need to do, what we need to believe, so that we can live in the certainty of Jesus' promise that we will have eternal life with him and the saints. Jesus told the Jewish people in today's reading, and he tells us today, very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. When I hear these words, I go back to the <clears throat> funeral for that young man, and I think about the immensity of God's gift, of the love God must have for you and for me, that he would send his son to die on a cross for our salvation, that he would give this gift this bread of life to us by giving up what was so precious to him, his beloved son. The word bread has been used multiple times over our last several weeks' gospel readings. What comes to your mind when you think of bread? I think most of us really like bread, cutting the end off a loaf of fresh baked bread, smearing it with peanut butter, the smell of cinnamon rolls when they come out of the oven. Bread in the Bible always signifies life or a gift from God to sustain life. In the Old Testament, the Israelites were told to bake unleavened bread to hasten their flight from slavery in Egypt. Then when they wandered the desert, God provided manna from heaven for them to eat so they wouldn't starve while looking for the promised land. These gifts of bread sustain the Israelites' physical lives. Now God was offering the world his son, who would become the bread of life for the world. This bread was different. This bread was going to give eternal life to all who ate of it. And we know that to eat is to believe and accept Jesus' teachings as holy truth. When Jesus told the Jewish people he had been sent from heaven, they argued among themselves. They questioned, how can that be? They thought they knew who Jesus was. They knew he had earthly parents. How could he have been sent from heaven? Why was he saying this? Because they wanted Jesus to be who they thought he should be, they were blind to believing he was divine and had been sent from heaven to offer himself, his body and his blood for our salvation. How often does what we think is the truth stand in our way of seeing the actual truth? A few examples might sound like this. We imagine someone thinks they're better than they are and so we don't wish to be their friend. The truth is, they are shy, they maybe aren't very self-confident, and they're waiting for us to invite them into our circle. Or maybe someone takes a verse or several verses from the Bible and claims that they support their personal opinion. 
even when those opinions might be in the support of slavery or the exclusion of others. They claim God sees things the way they do. They do not see the truth when they do this, since Jesus' message was not about inequality or exclusion, but about acceptance, love, <clears throat> and forgiveness for all of us. Maybe we've lost our way in life and made some poor decisions. We don't think we lived up to the plan God has set for us. We think God can no longer love us as we are, and so we stop believing. The truth is that God loves us no matter what mistakes we make. He will always love us no matter our warts and mistakes. God gave his only son to the world to be the bread of life for each and every one of us. But we need to believe this to have e eternal life. There are many stories in the Bible that deal with eating and life or eating and death. We begin in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve being told not to eat from the tree of knowledge. They ignore God's warning, and from that point, man was born into sin and death. Then God sends his son to save us, and we hear these words. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. No one wanted to hear these words, that Jesus was giving his flesh his very life for the world. Why should Jesus have to die? Wasn't he performing miracles? Wasn't he raising the dead, walking on water, and feeding the thousands with only a few fish and a couple loaves of bread? Why couldn't he just go on doing these miracles and stay with them if he truly was divine and sent from heaven? They wanted Jesus to be the savior they imagined he should be. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus was sent from heaven to die for our sins, for your sins and my sins. He knew from the time he was born it was his father's plan for him to give his body, his flesh and his blood for the world so that all might live. God has put eternity in our hearts and Jesus is the bread that will give us eternal life. So let us believe the words of our gospel. Let us eat this bread and with joy and thanksgiving take this eternal life that only Jesus can offer us. How comforting it is to think there is more to life than our physical life here on earth. Jesus came to give us everlasting life with him, with his Father, and with all the saints. Jesus tells us in that life there will be no hunger, no thirst, only life, the eternal life that belief in Jesus gives us. Amen.
pray together the Apostles' Creed found on the screens or on page 105 in your hymnals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future, God in your mercy. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God in your mercy. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For correction officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially those we name in our hearts, God, in your mercy. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebrations. For those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized. God, in your mercy. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share whatever sign of peace we are comfortable with with one another.
of love, we give thanks to you that you illuminate the way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a few announcements before the blessing. There are some surveys, I believe, in the back of the church. If you haven't been given one, please look for those, or someone will be handing those out. They can be filled out today or filled out at home and brought back. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, please receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be with you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is number 537, On Our Way Rejoicing. Joy. first and so we started with the refrain. She start over. Okay. <laughs> 